Uh, my name is Helen He. Uh, I'm uh, in the user engagement group as a high performance com computing consultant and also a NERSC training lead. Uh, Rebecca Hartman Baker is our uh, in user engagement, engagement group lead. Charles Lively is also in the same group um, as also as a science engagement engineer and con high performance consultant as well. So welcome everyone. And um, if you're a new user, it's good to get some acquaintance with the CentR Center and our user environment. And if you're an existing user, it's this is training is, is also good for having some refresh refresher on the uh, best practices on using Parameter. Uh, for two days of training, I'll give some overview and you have more, lots of uh, detailed presentations throughout today and tomorrow. Uh, as um, put in the chat, we would like you to use the Google Doc to question and answer. Our staff is standing by to answer your questions. So uh, this is on my agenda today. Uh, introduction to NERSC first, then I'll talk about hardware followed by software and how we are interacting users interacting with NERSC and some expectations and responsibilities for our users. About NERSC, uh, NERSC stands for National Energy Research Scientific Computing Center. It was established in 1974 as the first unclassified supercomputing center. Its original mission is to enable computational science as complement to magnetically controlled plasma experiment. It was sitting in within the Livermore National Lab. So you can see if you do the mass, 2024 this year is NERSC's 50th anniversary. Very exciting. Um, now it's today's mission becomes accelerate scientific discovery at the Department <clears throat> DOE Office of Science through high performance computing and extreme data analytics. The NERSC is a national user facility and it is also a part of the Berkeley lab. So as, as I mentioned, um, Mission HPC for DOE Office of Science. This is actually, uh, we are the largest funder, Office of Science is the largest funder of doing physical science research in the United States. There are six main, main program offices within the Office of Science, Bioenergy, uh, Environment, Computing, Materials Chemistry, Geophysics, Particle Physics, Astrophysics, Nuclear Physics, Fusion Energy, Plasma Physics. All these are basic energy science research and open science at Berkeley Lab. So our allocations are primarily controlled by each of the uh, DOE program managers. Um, so it's through the um, with proposal submit to a process called ERCAP and 80% of the allocation is awarded by uh, DOE managers. Um, so NERSC has no control of who our users are. If you have um, DOE funded research, or if even if not, if your uh, research is within the mission of DOE science, you can apply for NERSC um, allocations or ERCAP. There's also 10% um, allocation is uh, reserved for DOE ASCA leadership computing challenge. These are more, and higher risky, but higher also rewards um, bigger science application projects. There's also 10% that reserved the director, NERSC director reserved um, allocation that are more flexible to give out to um, startup projects, to give out some specific purpose projects, such as like in the past few years, uh, many were awarded to COVID research uh, rapidly. And there was some for the excess scale computing and some uh, educational projects as well, et cetera. Look at nurse by the numbers. We have users across US and world, all within all 50 United States and from 53 countries. We have over 10,000 annual users from 800 institutions, national labs, and over 1,000 codes. We have hundreds of users logging each day. Uh, if you look at splits, you can see actually Graduate students and postdocs uh, comprise the over 50% of new, our user base. We have users 60% from universities and of about 30% from DOE labs. Our users do grant breaking, grant breaking research, science um, discoveries and publish uh, referred publications each year, about 2,500. This is uh, more than any other silver community centers that we are aware of. 
And we, we are very proud of our users' accomplishments. Here is uh, some um, examples of these um, discoveries. I'm not going to go over the details of the slide, but just show you it's all um, over science categories and domains. We are also having six Nobel Prize winning users. Um, so Warren Washington, using a few examples, Warren Washington is the um, climate change, the IPC inter uh, govern government panel for climate change research. It's a big group of uh, climate scientists won the Peace Prize along with um, Al Gore that year, the vice president. And two of the other winners, George Smoot and Saul Promoter, actually are Berkeley Lab staff themselves. And uh, we'll talk about Paul Saul Promoter a little bit more in the next slide. Um, in an, uh, a few slides later, because <laughs> this is actually our system is named after him. So before that, I'll talk about some hardware at NERSC first. This is our NERSC systems roadmap. So every three to five years, we would acquire uh, a new system um, to having the latest technologies uh, and also for more energy efficient um, architectures. So um, we just retired um, in June, 2023, our previous system, Cori, which is named, codenamed as NERSC 8, is a uh, Intel Xeon Phi uh, mini core processor system. And our main process system right now on the ground uh, on the floor is NERSC 9, uh, which is named Parameter, as, as you can see in the, um, the picture above. It has CPU and GPU nodes for um, applications and data analytics and to support workflows. NERSC 10 is probably coming sometime late 2020 hey, or 2028, uh, 2027. Here, uh, NERSC 9, a poor model is named after the a scientist, a Nobel winner scientist. He won the dis for in physics for the discovery of that universe is ex expansion bench bending and is ex the expansion speed is ex actually accelerating. Um, he led the uh, supernova cosmology project. Um, he is a in pioneer in using our NERSC supercomputers combined large simulation, large simulations plus the experimental data analysis. So when we asked him, can we name our system after you? He said, yes. Uh, one condition that, because his last name is probably a little bit hard to type. So he said, if you want your name, sshpromoter.nos.gov, please also enable sshsaw.nos.gov. So we did that. So you can log in with either, either method. He has actually has an office uh, in, the, in the Berkeley lab campus. Um, so this parameter system is optimized for science. Um, it has three to four X capability of our previous system, Cori NERSC-8. Um, it's connected, it's sort of lots of lots of nodes connected with high speed, uh, high performance network. It's called Cray Slingshot. Each of the system you can consider a sort of equivalent of your desktop system, but they are tightly connected uh, for larger scale application optimization. The file system is all flash. It's a very high performance. Uh, we launched something called NISAP, which is an application readiness program to start preparing our users a few a few years before promoters um, is delivered. Uh, so we uh, having application teams working on test systems. We do train our users on programming models, especially uh, GPU programming is new to our NERSC users because our previous system is CPU only system. Uh, Promoter arrived in two phases, GPU phase one and uh, CPU phase two. You have We have about twice a number of CPU nodes, <clears throat> which is AMD Milan. And its GPU is, um, each GPU node has um, one Milan CPU and four uh, NVIDIA A100 GPUs. <clears throat> so Promoter is very good for, um, for um, simulation and data analytics work. Its GPU nodes especially has immense po computer power. So if your application is ready for GPU, please be sure to explore it, the, its um, uh, power. It, and if um, your application is not ready yet, still have the peace of mind that you could do, um, your application runs on the CPU nodes. Um, it even though I have twice number of nodes, it's actually only about ten percent of the total promoter um, computing power. But even it's 
that, it's already equivalent of the query system performance. Here I want to show you a uh, NERSC system's ecosystem. So on the left side is mainly the parameter system because Cori has retired. So this is uh, the bigger um, flagship system right now. And these are connected through Ethernet, local area network, to uh, lots of uh, file systems and some um, gateway nodes and data DTNs stand for data transfer nodes, it's especially um, tuned for tra data transfer between NERSC and other sites, also within NERSC as well. And Spin is also a server that you have can, can have your own size uh, gateways. And all these NERSC will internally uh, connect through outside with outside world through the ESNet, which is a dedicated um, network um, funded by Department of Energy and is actually managed by Berkeley Lab. This um, connects our more major DOE facilities, experiment sites over 40 within US and also over 140 research and science institutions for our DOE funded scientists to collaborate with other, um, <clears throat> to do collaboration work with uh, scientists around the world. It's connected to so cloud, so other facilities as well, so edge, with edge, with cloud. Um, here I am next, I want to show you some of the NERSC file systems. Um, and uh, how we they should be used. You will hear a lot more uh, today and tomorrow, and also next week's data data day. But here, just on some simplified, show you the simplified NERSC file systems from top to bottom um, performance uh, highest on the top, but the capability capacity is highest on the bottom. We have some local file memory is the on the compute nodes. Local Scratch is a local file system on um, available on parameter Scratch parameter only. And we have some global file systems, um, community file system, and uh, global home, global common. They're all, they're all mounted on any of the NERSC systems, including data transfer nodes. We also have longer term storage, uh, tape archive, HPSS. I'll show a few more um, slides on these topics. <clears throat> so here's a parameter file system. I talk about global home, global community file system, and local scratch. So global home is where you uh, log in and you land, land onto it uh, by default. It is permanent uh, storage, but re relatively small. This quota is only 40 gigabytes. It's not tuned uh, for parallel jobs. So um, be sure not to run production jobs on, promoter, uh, on the global home. This space is perfect for you to store data such as your source codes, your shell scripts, et cetera. Uh, we have a snapshot backups for seven days, which means if you accidentally delete the file today, if this file exists within the last few last seven days, you're able to get um, back get it back through the snapshot snap snapshot um, backups by yourself. It's uh, it's a start file directory you can get access to. Uh, similar, similarly, the global community file system also has the snapshot backups. It has, it is also permanent, um, much larger than uh, your global home. And it has medium performance for parallel jobs. So, and also it is configured by default to be uh, shareable among your projects. So each project has a directory um, <laughs> within the uh, community uh, file system CFS. So you go to that directory, and then if you create a file, it's automatically shared within your research group. You could create uh, subdirectories there and manage your own permissions um, within that as well. You, you could do CD dollar CFS to get to um, get to the community file system. I see the question about quota. Quota means uh, the number of files and and the the space of the files that you are um, permit you are uh, given to given to to use. If over the quota you may you know having issues, you cannot create new files and you cannot run jobs, etc. Um, local scratch, so it's large, temporary, and all, all, all flash system. It's optimized, highly optimized for read and write operations. So it's very good for staging your data and perform your applications, computations there. However, it is not meant for storage. We have a push policy just in turned on um, earlier this month 
If your file has not been accessed for eight weeks, it is subject to be purged. So be sure to back up your important files and clean up a few um, simulation runs, put archive them back to the global file systems, such as community file system or longer term um, HPSS archive system. So HPSS stands for High Performance Storage System. It's as good for your infrequently access data, and you can uh, stage your data to your scratch file system when it's you know when you need to use it. Um, it at first it is uh, stored into the disk arrays, and over the time it'll be migrated to longer term uh, date tape subsystem. So if your data is already in the date tape, when you try to reach it, retrieve it, it may take a little bit longer than if it's already still uh, on the disk arrays. I see a question about, are there a plan to make Scratch accessible from the DTNs? We would like to do that, but there are so, uh, currently some technical uh, difficulties, so we can uh, promise uh, when or where, whether it will be uh, available from DTNs. Um, here is, I want to show you a famous analog analogy by Rebecca um, to, to think as of our NERSC computing system um, to compare with our baking. So you have uh, NERSC is a gigantic shared kitchen space with latest, all the latest kitchen gadgets, our computers as ovens, and um, you have input data just like your in uh, baking ingredients and you find you want to do some simulation, your output, is uh, like as if you are making a cake, which is your product. And your commu uh, computing storage system, your home, your CFS is your pantry, the fridge. I'll, sh I'll show you the next slide to talk about this. So you have your state your ingredients from pantry and fridge, um, maybe some rarely used ingredients from freezer. Um, these are <clears throat> a pantry. So for example, say it's your home directory and fridge say it's your um, uh, community file system and rarely used freezer is maybe um, the HPSS. So you want to move, uh, stage them all onto the kitchen counter, which is a luster scratch system. Then you do your simulation, you make your cake, when everything is done, you would like to clean up. Uh, you could let your cake uh, sit and cool down for a little bit, but you could not leave it there too long so that we need to clean up to, for, for the kitchen counter to be ready, for the file system to be ready for the next user. Um, we would like to keep our storage to be like less than 70% um, occupancy for file system have uh, optimal uh, IO performance for our users. So if you don't clean up, we have the purge policy, we may uh, clean up for you, which means we will throw away your materials, including your cake. Um, if you do your cleanup, you would um, try to put away your cake into freezer or in, in, into kitchen, uh, in, into the uh, refrigerator for next day consumption by yourself, right? And similarly, uh, archive your data to, to, uh, to the community file system. So this is our famous uh, anal analogy by Rebecca. Are there any uh, questions so far? Oh, what is a DTM? Is it? DTN, I think that's a good answer on the uh, Google Doc already. It stands for data transfer node, especially tuned for data transfer. So I'll leave it as this, and you can read the answer that by um, our staff here. So next, I will talk about software. So software, um, for example, compilers, libraries, packages, some of them are provided by our, a vendor and um, by HPE. Uh, slash Cray, and the operating system is the version of Linux. So lots of um, commonly used software can be used on our systems. Um, NERSC will provide strategically our software that highly needed by our users and highly used um, application packages, especially, for example, um, material science and, and chemistry packages. I'll, sh I'll show a slide um, next. We also have lots of uh, data analytics software packages as well. And also the E4S stands for Extreme Scale Scientific Software Stack. Uh, it has, um, <clears throat> the stack software stack contains hundreds of packages uh, delivered through the SPAC package manager. So you module load E4S and you, you'll be able to access many of these applications. 
Here's the chemistry material science application uh, picture here. Uh, VASP is the highest uh, used application um, by our users. And you can see also other Berkeley GW, Quant Espresso, LAMPS, NW, uh, CAM, NAMD, to name a few. And more than 13.5 million lines of codes are compiled, optimized, and tested. Do you, often you can see a CPU version of package and a GPU version of package that you can choose to use. And uh, again, the data rich, uh, we have very rich data ecosystem. We have data transfer nodes, uh, DTN, and you can use the Globus for transfer and Jupyter uh, to log in to, to do lots of data analytics work. We have machine learning packages, PyTorch, TensorFlow, and et cetera. The data workflow um, tools, GNU Parallel, Parcel, Fireworks, and data management, databases, um, HDF, um, IO, uh, data analytics uh, packages, Mathematics, MATLAB, Julia, and, and also uh, containers, shifters, Spring, and Podman right now. Also, I want to show you that uh, Promoter supports many compilers and every GPU programming model. Um, the color, the program models, including Fortran, standard C, C++ standard language, CUDA, CUDA Fortran, OpenMP, OpenACC, Cocos, Raja, MPI, HIP, DPC++, and SQL. So the green colored box is meaning um, provided by vendor supported and um, the yellowish color meaning NERSC staff supported LVM and Intel compilers and different programming models that we offer lots of trainings on them, them as well. Right. I'm looking at, probably I'll have the, the question that Google Doc uh, just answered by, by staff. Um, I'll talk um, next about the interacting with NERSC users relationship communication with NERSC. So we have a, as I said, we are we have a user engagement group. We mainly do user engagement, outreach, communications, through also through training and documentation, and handholding. We have the um, um, consulting and account support through user tickets or appointments. And I was all, I will I will also talk about the operations group and uh, a NERSC user group. So here is uh, not everyone is pictured here, but most of them are. These are the people you get in touch with when you file a ticket. You get answers from the ticketing system, appointments, etc. Um, truly, it takes a village of our staff to help and communicate and commun engage with our users. Um, consulting is our highest priority and is also the first uh, interaction that users have <clears throat> with us when you submit a ticket. So here I want to show you just quickly. In 2023, we handled over 8,000 tickets from over 3,000 unique users. Um, it's, this plot shows incidents by months. Um, each month we have about um, over 600 to about 800 tickets each month. Uh, November, December are a little bit lighter than normal other months. And here, uh, these shows some of the higher um, categories, account support, running jobs, usually are um, more, uh, most of the ticket categories about, but obviously we have many, many uh, ticket categories as well. Data IO, workstation, programming, uh, scratch, software, etc. So some expectations that if you open a ticket, you would normally get a first response within four business hours. But if you do open a ticket on Friday evening, you would expect to get a response on Monday morning. Uh, we will also try to resolve a ticket as soon as possible. And if not, we'll keep you a prog um, aware of the progress and, and plan. And <clears throat> we do welcome user feedback. Sometimes you get... Um, um, in the ticket system, you, you will ask for feedback, please do, and to give us constructive criticism, welcome, um, listen to you. Um, some tips tips for consulting. We would like to help you, but also to try to, let's try to work together to minimize the communication overhead. For example, um, we need, if, we, if, uh, if you could provide lots of information in, at the first uh, pass that we don't need to ask you 
questions and then wait for your re responses. So if you can, please uh, specify what is the problem, uh, what machine, which node, login node, um, compute node, uh, which file pass, and when did it happen? What modules you loaded? Did you do something, try to work around it? Is this reproducible? How can I reproduce your problem? And we also have a web page about how to file a good, a good ticket. So once we can reproduce, we can, we're able to um, to easily find um, work around. If we have more details of your tickets, we can you know look at lots of system logs and you know etc. So this is uh, it's a win win situation. Um, next is the user appointments. We started with office hours in twenty eighteen. Uh, users can drop by and and bring in any of the questions. There's a little bit shortcoming with that is that sometimes we have long periods of no participants. So our lots of uh, a few of our staff are just standing by, and sometimes all oh, they'll jump on simultaneously. <laughs> so we started with the appointment uh, mechanism, and users can set up a thirty minute appointments, choose on a chosen topic, and and you can select which consultant you would like to talk to. So these are the available appointments. So be sure to take advantage of this on top of, of submitting a ticket to us. Um, next, I will talk about nurse user training. Uh, NERSC offers a robust training program for users for all skill levels, interest, and personas. Personas meaning uh, user uh, category. For example, your novice data user, advanced simulation user, PI, um, et cetera, application user. Um, so all of trainings are recorded. We have professional captioning for them posted to NERSC YouTube channel. We offer multiple trainings a month usually, and we also, the slides are available. So if you miss the training, um, don't, um, you, you would have a chance to review. And then you would follow with GitHub or uh, steps, uh, the exercise, uh, kinds of exercise, many of them as well. This webpage, um, upcoming and past training events, is listed in the chronicle order of upcoming events. And then on top, there's a link for past events that so you can filter by year to find past events. But also we have two other pages. One is categorized training materials. So you go in, you could see uh, the topics of you know user training topics, uh, programming models topics, um, data analytics topics, applications, tools, etc. And we also have events, training events archive page, so you can easily browse through the past year's training events and click link to get more information of slides and YouTube of each individual events. <clears throat> so I want to broadcast a few um, upcoming training events. So this is the event page again. So um, next week is the data day. Uh, it's a hybrid event um, for the latest, greatest data focus tools. So, so this is, you can, um, view this as a natural follow-up of today's, tomorrow's training of new user and uh, best practices. So this data day is obviously focused more on data uh, analytics tools and such. And then follow-up um, on Friday of this week, we will have a combined office hour for today's training and day-to-day -day training. And you can sign up with your topics so we can have experts stand by. But if not, you're still encouraged to just drop by um, and so bring any of the questions you may have uh, to the office hour next Friday. And also, um, I also would like to highlight um, a performance portability series. Like I mentioned, we have all uh, GPU programming models available. So the portability series is for um, programming models, um, portability, um, the um, many other GPU uh, architectures, such as as in our at Argon or at Oak Ridge, the Intel GPU or AMD GPU, and, and we have NVIDIA GPU, so all the programming models, et cetera. <clears throat> so next event um, on Monday, February 26th, is actually an overview talk of all the pros and cons of these programming models, performance, et cetera, should be very interesting. Excuse me. <laughs> um, March 14th AMREX is, uh, is also a part of the performance series training. And even though the overview is training uh, is next week, uh, <laughs> if you click on the training series, you, already, you can see we already have a few of other trainings. We had a HIP training series, we have a SQL training, OpenMP training, all part of the training portability training series. You can click on and find the information. 
And also I want to mention the Forge training, which is profiling and, and debugging training. And Forge train on multiple GPUs training at the end of March. <laughs> Sorry for the pause, I, I coughed. Bless you. So um, on those operations, I just want to mention operation staff are on, are on site 24 by seven um, every day of the year. So they know the health of the systems and they also publish NERSC message of the day for live status. So you can always check on this and before you file a ticket, see if it's already a known issue, um, if like system down, et cetera. Uh, operations can help you with some simple tasks like KO, uh, you're running jobs or, you know, if you have a reservation, you, you're done with the reservation, you ask them to kill this. But um, in, 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 in the bigger spirit of that, please avoid contact operations except for the urgent cases. So you're encouraged to file a ticket. And also the, as uh, there are some, a few other means for um, contacting staff or contact your pure uh, nurse users. Here, as uh, as I mentioned, is this on the next Slack. So we have a NERSC user group, like community. <laughs> it's a community for NERSC users. We have a next Slack for that. So you could post questions and and and, and have uh, it's basically an informal forum for staff and and it's mostly for users uh, helping users. Then um, I want to mention that um, the snug group have some it has the bigger community of users, but also a tighter community of executive committee, which have three represent each from each office and three members at large. So we have, they bring um, <clears throat> advice and feedback for users to us and we listen. We also host monthly um, telecons on each third, usually third Thursday of the month. And NUC has a, some, several special interest groups. We have experimental facilities, Fortran, Wolf, and some more are forming, such as graduate students, as I, as I mentioned, with the great, biggest body of, <clears throat> of users. And be sure to join us for the NUC annual meeting. The date has been set, October 2020, 20, October 2024, uh, with lots of exciting 50th anniversary related events. Okay, um, so this is my last um, slide. Uh, we told you lots of our what we offer, but we also have some expectations from you. We would like you to be kind to your neighbor users. Don't abuse the shared resources such as like logging nodes, home directories. Don't run production runs. Don't use lots of CPU, GPUs, uh, memories on logging nodes. Don't do heavy I/O on those nodes as well. And uh, use your allocation smartly be sure to pick the right source resource for your job, your data. We have lots of documentations. And if you have any questions, let us know with uh, submitting a ticket, office hour, et cetera. And always, always back up your stuff, important stuff, especially from scratch, which has a approach policy. Please acknowledge NERSC in your papers. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> this way we would have, you know, get more funding from DOE so we could stay in business and, continue, and continuously serve you more. Uh, also, we would, uh, we are very, um, <clears throat> We care a lot for security. Do not, do not ever share your account with others. If we do find those, we will have to disable you um, for doing that. Um, so this is uh, all I have. Uh, I think I forgot to mention one thing. You definitely are receiving weekly emails from Rebecca on Monday. On Mondays, um, uh, lots of good information there. Um, so uh, we would hope that you could uh, pay attention to those uh, news and some new policies, upcoming trainings, um, opportunities, etc. Uh, okay, this is all I have. I may. Okay,